Hello everyone. Today we will see how can we set up PySpark in Python Jupyter Notebook. What I'm using is Python with Anaconda. Now in case if you don't have Python with Anaconda, if you still have just Python and uh, Jupyter Notebook, you can still give it a try. So there are just uh, you know two, three steps that you need to give, uh, do. But yeah, you will encounter an error and see how, uh, how we can get rid of that error. Okay. So first thing is we will pip install PySpark. We'll need to ensure that you put this exclamation mark and then we'll run this. And in another cell, we will pip install find PySpark. Okay. Now, if you see, I've got a message requirement already satisfied because I've already done it previously. And now, in your case, it's going to be a different message. And um, yeah, next step again, you run it. We are installing find Spark. Now, here also, I should get the same message requirement already satisfied. Now, in next step, I'm going to import find Spark and then initiate it. And in the next step, I'm going to uh, include a uh, no, Spark session. Be careful with that, you know, caps. It should be in capital in either case, okay? Yeah, so once this is done, now the last cell that I have, I'm creating a data frame and I'm, uh, you know, printing out the data frame just to check whether uh, my Spark session has come out properly or not. Okay, while I do so, uh, now I'm going to hang on for a while, okay? As you can see, this star, it only says that it's still running. The reason it's still running, because I have tried uh, many times, it gave me an error message. I'm going to show you that error, but let me stop it. OK, and now, yeah, this is an error message. I have I have the screenshot with me. This is the first error message that I've got. OK, if you read this error message, it says PySpark runtime error. OK, Java gateway process exceeded before sending its port number. So the problem is that you don't have JDK installed in your system. So when you work with PySpark, you need to have JDK. So let's see how can we quickly install JDK. OK, as it says JDK download for Windows. Yeah, we'll go to this. This website and then we we'll look for Windows. And we're going to install x64 installer. Now, when I'm installing this, this is 22 version 22. So when you do it, maybe it's going to be a different version. Yeah. So I'll just click here. My download is getting started. It's going to take some time for a while. Yeah. OK, so the download is done. Now I'm going to run it. You click it, it should do the work. So while we do the install, installation will follow, uh, you know, certain steps. OK, uh, you just don't click yes and yes every, every time. So you go next and when it asks for the path, just change the path. OK, uh, we'll go back. And I'll ensure that I'll go before the program files in my C drive. Okay, I'm just in my C drive. I'll quickly create a folder and name it as Java. Okay, and I'll go inside Java. Okay. And here I'll create another file named as JDK. And here I'm going to install the JDK. The process should happen very quickly. The entire process should not take more than two minutes. OK, my installation is done. And in the next step, after you have installed, I'll quickly search for environment. So I'm going to type environment. OK, so edit the system environment variables. This is where I want to go. And I'll go to environment variables here quick in use user variables. I'm going to quickly create a new and then I'm going to name the variable name as Java underscore home. And in the variable value, I'm going to put the path. OK, now the path of what? The path of the Java. Okay. If you see, I'm into the C folder, Java, JDK, and I'm going to copy this part. I also want you to see that inside JDK, I'm going to have bean, config, include. Okay. So uh, you don't need to remember this. I'm just showing it so that I'll I'll tell you what happens when. I'm going to create okay. Now this is done. My Java home is done. Now I'm going to go to system variable and I'm going to go to path here and now create new. Okay, not new, sorry, edit. So when you do edit, you go right at the bottom here, you double click it. And you're going to put, you know, put percentage sign and then Java hook. The same part, same variable name, if you remember, I'm going to put it here. And now I'm going to put backslash bin. If you remember the bin uh, I showed you in that, uh, you know, Java home directory. So that's it. So this is the bin folder inside JDK I was talking about. Yeah. So once this is done, we are good. And let's open uh, uh, our Jupyter notebook and I'll quickly refresh it. Okay. Once I refresh it, 
yeah now let me run from the top i'm running the pip installation part again it should say me requirement already satisfied again the second one this is also done i'm going to import uh find spark and then uh, your spark session now i'm going to test whether my data frame uh, is going to get created or not in spice spark environment okay now this is at first go it's going to take a couple of minutes okay shouldn't take uh, two more than two minutes first let's see if everything works well then you should have it uh the data frame being printed okay yeah so if you see this is painted so yeah your uh pie spark is all it's all set so much so you will also get to see your local host here okay so what is local host this is where you're going to see all your job that is getting executed uh i mean in terms of partition um, you know uh, cluster all the informations are going to be here okay so the uh, uh, executors if these concepts are, are not known i'll have some videos done okay in the future so as of now this is it thank you so much